Hi everybody, this is Nechama from Art Intelligence and in this video I'm going to show you how to deal with the pattern deformation that occurs when trying to deal with sloped surfaces in Revit. And we're going to do it of course using the environment plugin which was created for landscape architects and it was meant to help us avoid all these complex and repetitive actions in Revit and make the entire process more efficient and fluent. So we're going to do it using the object outline command and I'm going to demonstrate on this project right over here. You can see the pattern deformation that occurred on both of these floors. Um, the object outline command only works on plan views and it is basically a graphical solution that works per view. So let's say I want to edit this site view over here. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that all the surface patterns in this view are uh, hidden. And so I go to the visibility graphics and you can see that all the floors, all the floor patterns for me are hidden. The reason that I do it is because I don't want to have one pattern on top of another. Okay, so now let's try to apply it on this floor over here. We simply go to the environment plugin to the presentation panel and select object outline and environment is going to create let's select it and see it's a basically new field region type that has the same name as my floor type if i select the floor over here you can see that it's called stone paving and then my uh field region the new field region is called stone paving as well and of course what I wanted is for it to have the pattern of the floor type. So this field region is linked to my floor. What it means is that every geometrical change that I make to my floor or material change that I make to this floor, this field region will be updated with it. So for example, let's say I want to move this floor a bit and environment will ask me if I want to modify the field region. Let's say yes for now. Now, in case I make a lot of changes to this floor, maybe I will choose to say, don't ask again and no. And now for this entire work session, Revit will never ask me if I want to update my field regions, unless I exit Revit and go back, um, open this file again. But what if I want to update my floor now? I finished, um, I finished making all these changes to my floor and now I want to update this field region. So I simply go to this little drop down arrow next to the object outline command and I select update object outline. And now this, um, this dialog has opened and I have two options. If I press yes, I simply update all uh, the object outline elements in this specific view. But if I check this little box over here, it will update all object outline elements in the entire project. So let's press yes now. And you can see how easily this field region was updated with my floor. So as we said, when creating an object outline, environment will create a new field region type with the name of the surface that it's, it's attached to. Now in some cases, like in here, I have already have in my file a field region type with the name grass and this floor type also named grass so in case i try to apply the object outline on this surface environment will let me know that it will actually use the field region type that already exists in my model so there are a few ways that i can handle this kind of issue the first one is to purge the existing uh, field region out of my file and the other one is pretty simple just to rename uh, the floor type let's say grass site in this case and click OK and now I can easily apply the object outline on top of it now in certain cases I will have one floor on top of another um, so the easiest way to solve it is simply to send, send the field region to back but it's not a very good solution because in cases that let's say I update this floor over here right now and now once the field region is updated it will cover my floor again 
So I want to show you a really nice way to unlink uh, the boundary of the field region with the floor. You simply select the field region and go to the field region properties and uncheck update boundary. Now <clears throat> you can easily edit this boundary. And it will not update upon changing my floor. For example, let's say I want to move um, this entire thing over here. Let's move it a little bit up. And then the floor contours, of course, they are linked to my floor again. And let's say I will modify uh, these field regions because it modified this one. But the big field region remained with the shape that I wanted it to be. So let's hit Ctrl Z right now. Uh, last but not least for this video, I want to demonstrate a little bit about the material update of the field region. So let's go ahead and apply this field region on this sidewalk as well. You can see that it got this nice pattern over here. Now if I select my floor and let's say I change my floor type. You can see how easily the field region was changed along with it. Also, if I only edit the type itself, the materials of my floor, let's say I pick another kind of paving for my floor, it will update automatically. But there is also a way to unlink the material update but still keep the geometrical update. So let's go to the type properties of the field region and now let's uncheck the update pattern box over here. And so now what's going to happen is that if I edit the floor type material, let's bring it back to paving 2 again, my field region would not update. Let's hide this field region. And you can see that my floor material was changed, but my field region was not changed. But still, if I move this floor, the field region is geometrically linked to it. Let's go Control Z for a second. Nonetheless, if the update pattern box is unchecked, when I change the floor type, it will still change with it. So what I did here is basically I only unlinked the, the material change of the floor itself. This is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and for more information about the environment plugin, you're more than welcome to go to our website arcintelligence.com and then go to the product description and see more tutorials. Thank you so much.